Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. I thought it would give y'all a special edition while I'm rounding up the rest of the entries for the series. And again, based on your suggestions, I uh, will finish those probably throughout the later on this week, probably going into next week. But no, this special edition actually has to do with looking back at the history tied to my Cryptids and Monsters videos. I was looking at the playlist and and it turns out there's about 90 or something so videos that I've done on this particular series. And I realized to myself, my goodness, that's a good number of videos. I'm going to hit the 100 club soon and before I do so I wanted to create a special one where I would talk about the top five my favorite cryptids and monsters that I've done based on some of them on your suggestions some of them on my own out of all of the 90 something videos that I've done I've just basically taken the top five that are my personal favorite um, so they're in no particular order so it's not like I'm ranking them in terms of like the bottom five to the top five nothing like that instead I'll just present them here chronologically just basically stating what are my favorites and I'll explain the reasons for them and some of you might see your suggestions as some of my favorites some of you won't again these are just my own personal tastes and the reasons that I have for it and hopefully um, if if you agree you know please post your comments below um, if you have your own top five out of all my videos um, put them on there too um, as, as anything involving comments I'll be interested to see how well they match or how different they are so in this case let's start off with the number one first video that I'll mention here and it has to do with my inaugural video bloop the cryptid that started it all and it was the reason that I began my YouTube channel on the cryptids and monsters side because bloop remains my most favorite cryptid of all I mean this was and is a cryptid that still captures my imagination fully the idea that there's something so massive so incredibly large out there in the sea and the fact that it's something that would make a blue whale look like a tiny little fish the idea that something is floating out there in the sea just like that wow that's what started it all for me that's why I created this YouTube series because once I started talking about bloop I realized that there's you know a whole other world of cryptids and other types of monsters to talk about and bloop was the very first one I wanted to share with everybody uh, the reason why I like bloop so much is because the sheer size of bloop I mean yeah um, there are other entities that I've talked about later that could potentially be larger um, than than bloop itself but anything like Zarathon for example but anything else um, at least with bloop it was my number one video so the second video that is my favorite is the genius Loki and the reason why I picked this one is because the idea of an entity being able to just be there and yet not be there at the same time it's very unsettling and what I mean is this genius Loki is some kind of entity I don't know if it's a cryptid or a monster necessarily but it's something that lives within a designated uh, piece of land and it cannot escape this land it's bound to that land almost as if it has like a chain tied directly to it and so because of this and what makes it so unsettling for me is because it cannot escape that piece of land you could probably if you knew the exact parameters of the land that it's bound to you could probably walk up right to the edge and never know that there's something just staring inches away from you and this is because the genius Loki by its very nature is an entity that can never be seen can never be smelled can never be heard can never be touched nothing it is 100 percent invisible cloaked everything to the average human but it's there and so for it to just be inches away from you probably just staring laughing yelling whatever at you and yet you have no idea that it's in and around you probably trying to influence you in certain ways that's what makes it so creepy so unsettling for me 
And the reason why I picked this particular entity too was because the movie Session 9, which remains one of my favorite movies ever that I have seen, it it pretty much, it doesn't say it outright, but it alludes to the fact that the entity that was manipulating and talking to uh, the woman that was chronicled in that Session 9 tape and then also to the main lead character might have been an actual genius Loki, but actually a a bad one uh, because usually genius Lokis are tend to be entities that are protective of a land but not necessarily some that are evil but in this case in the movie itself it was definitely one that was evil because it was manipulating subtly the other characters into doing its bidding into doing very bad things and so also the idea that that you could just be walking along a path walking along whatever highway and suddenly you're in its territory and it pounces on you not in the traditional sense like you can sense or feel it but it welcomes a new visitor because now it can start circling around you and then trying to see what it can make you do that that's what makes it so weird and you have no idea of this who knows the apartment, the home that you're at, whatever you're located, you could be in and around a genius Loki and you have no idea. No idea at all. That's what that's why I picked this particular entity. Um and I talked about it early on in my series because it is very creepy to have that idea happen and yet you have no idea that it's occurring. So number two on my particular top five cryptids here. Number three is a set of entities that uh, the reason I picked these is because of the idea that you could be trapped and be have nothing to do in terms of escape other than the following um, and it's called the night marchers uh, another suggestion that uh, from some someone out there and what this was was the night marchers they're I don't know if they're exactly paranormal or supernatural but they're a group of of entities of sorts that walk around Hawaii and when they do so they if you're trapped in, in terms of where they're coming from and where they're going to if you're caught in their path it could mean doom for you uh, because the tale goes that with the night marchers they suddenly come out of nowhere like they don't really announce their presence ahead of time the closest that you have to the night marchers is you start hearing perhaps some tribal sounds, some tribal music, maybe the sound of people marching, and then before you know it, they're coming around the area. And when that happens, um, it's the idea that unless you're surrounding your area by with a special leaf, if I recall correctly, or some other type of special item, then these night marchers are coming straight towards you. And the only way to essentially stop anything involving the night marchers from overtaking you because once they come across you and they sense you or they come across you and they know that you're there then that's it it's the end of you the only way to do so is to lie down on the ground be completely still and do not make a single noise that's why I picked this one because it's so terrifying to realize that if these night marchers if you're especially like I say in an open area let's say you're just walking across one grassy field to another and all of a sudden the night marchers come out of nowhere you're you can't hide anymore you can't run around and then just try to find the closest location to disappear from no all you have to do then is lie down on the ground cover everything that you can try not to make a single bit of noise no matter how scary the situation is and then all you do is just pray for these things to come across you and ignore you while they're marching around you and then that's it you have to essentially try to uh, hope that that they do not notice you and that's what makes it so unsettling because um, you have your eyes closed you have your ears try to close them as much as you can um, you know that they're around you you know that they're marching right over you but you can't do a single thing about it you just have to lay still as still as you can almost as if you're dead and then when they ignore you and they walk away then that's it then you're safe creepy creepy stuff so that's why I listed it on one of my top five cryptids number three number four is also another suggestion 
this one I picked this because and it remains one of my favorites because there's actual physical evidence of the location many of the cryptids and many of the monsters that I've talked about there have been uh, places and locations where people have encountered these items these creatures but in this case there is one known location and it is still there today that you can be visited that's what makes it so creepy that's what makes it so unsettling the idea that wherever this thing was it came out of one place and you can visit that place to this day and who knows maybe encounter this thing again I'm talking about the nameless thing of Berkeley Square um, those of you that have seen my video I think a lot of you especially like this one too it's the idea that it happened in an area in a home not a home but in a place that involved multiple floors and this thing whatever this was came out of one particular corner and when it did so it caused so much havoc to the people that the two guys that were there that um, they one of them that at least the one that was able to survive was able to later state exactly where it was and then when they all went to check it they no longer saw it there that's what makes it so creepy because um, to this day that particular location which you see a picture of here it's still a place people can visit although I've heard that it's uh, still it's it's locked off like it's not a exactly a place that you can walk right up to 100 percent but the owner himself he said that he still apparently encounters strange things um, and, and I think even one of my uh, users, one of the ones that posted a comment stated as such as well that the uh, location is still a place that has this weird feeling to it. It's this strange aura. Something where it's just not right whenever you come across that area. And that's why I picked it and why it still remains a favorite of mine because who knows, um, if you're lucky enough to actually go straight to that place and actually go straight to the corner where this thing emerged and supposedly and purposely like went away, then you're able to hope, you know, if, 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 you're, if you're that lucky, then you'll be able to experience and find this cryptid yet again. St creepy, creepy stuff. And then number five, the last one, this one I picked, um, it's one of my more recent ones, it was the Funeral Mountain Terror Shot. And the reason why I picked this one, and it remains a lasting one as one of my favorites, is because it seemed like it was a very tragic cryptid. Here you had something whose sole purpose, it seemed, was to march, march in unison, a group of animals that looked dumb. I mean, they just looked like pitifully dumb and these things would just march in unison as if they were marching from one land to another probably on a quest of some sort only to seemingly sacrifice themselves because they would ba literally march themselves to death um, there was no point it turns out to their march other than marching as long as they could until they would finally keel over and explode that's what made it seem so tragic about these creatures because um, if they were real at the time and people could just come across them why did anybody stop them you know why didn't anybody prevent them from uh, killing themselves it's like seeing something um, let's say washed ashore anything involving like a small whale or anything else involving another sea mammal something that's washed ashore you see it and you know that it's stuck and you know all it takes is just a couple little pushes and it's back into the sea but at the same time if you're seeing this especially through like let's say a television or through video then you know that you can't do really anything at that time so that's what makes it so tragic the idea that something for whatever reason would voluntarily commit suicide like that and just let itself wash ashore same reasoning here with the funeral mountain terror shot if it was marching so long why did it march the, that way like why why would it do this only if it knew that it would eventually end up killing itself doing so and it, it just it created like a haunting experience when it came to the funeral mountain terror shot the idea that there was something out there like this that was able to do this and um, basically become like the the reason that they're extinct is their own activity that's what makes it so 
so tragic, like the dodo bird, if you will. So, Also, I wanted to give an honorable mention to uh, another recent suggestion, and this was the Black Stick Men. Not exactly in the top five, but the reason why I wanted to give it an honorable mention is because it, too, is also very creepy. The idea that there's these things out there that look like... Um, basically not like shadow people but they look like something else entirely different two-dimensional that's what made it so creepy like hairs on end sticking up creepy the fact that when you're looking at this thing it looks like a living incarnation of of like what was the name of that guy uh doom the doom guy from the who framed roger rabbit when he was squished and rolled over by the steamroller and he was getting up Everyone, I don't know if you, I don't care if you were a child, if you, or if you were older, but when you saw that scene where the Doom guy was getting up and he was flat and two-dimensional, that looked very unsettling, very creepy. Imagine both seeing that and seeing that in real life, and then not only that, but seeing this thing turning straight towards you, and then according to the tales that are tied to the people ex who experience these black stick men. It's the idea that if they saw you seeing it, then they would actually run straight towards you, almost as if they're wanting to scare the bejesus out of you to ensure that you're no longer looking at them. That would create quite an experience, and the idea that it already happened to other people, that is creepy stuff. That's why I picked it, and it remains uh, one of the lasting ones, the Black Stick Men, because of that fact, because... Um, seeing something that is just sheer solid blackness two-dimensional long thin elongated just uh, it's just something where I don't want to encounter these things and to the people that have you know my hats off to you it's not something that I wish to anybody but that's why it remains as an honorable mention to the uh, Cryptids and Monsters series. And one last one that I wanted to do an honorable mention. Didn't make the top five, but it just was suggested very recently. And that was the Gargoyles of Chile. Um, and the reason why I picked this is because everything so far that has been encountered with these gargoyles and I just did this video the other day everything that has been suggested in terms of the encounters are they purposely hunt the people out there in that long stretch of lonely highway that's what makes it so memorable for me the idea that you're driving and the open night there are hundreds and hundreds of miles of nothing surrounding you and all of a sudden the only illumination you see and you think your eyes are smelling tricks on you but they're not you're starting to see two things floating back and forth behind your car or your truck as they're slowly stalking you that's what made it so memorable and that's why it remains an honorable mention um, within my series because these gargoyles of Chile whatever they were doing they created a scenario that, again, I would not wish on anyone else, but a very, very memorable um, set of information that I was able to pick up from them. So, otherwise, what do you guys think? Those are my top five suggestions, along with uh, my, you know, some honorable mentions. Some of these, again, based on your own suggestions. Some of them on stuff that I picked on my own. But otherwise, those remain the top five favorites. I'll probably do this again later on down the road probably about another uh, almost year or so uh, because the whole idea of this is as my videos progress and as I continue to make more and more of them who knows and um, the top five could change uh, there could be some that squeeze on up there and drop and others that drop off it just depends again on the wealth and the beautiful information that's out there the plentiful information that's out there on anything involving cryptids and monsters the night is still young there's still so much more to talk about so in about another year we'll see if my top five suggestions change and please um, whatever your own suggestions are uh, I'll be happy to hear them you know uh, post them below share your own uh, list um, be great to see how well they match or how different they are from what I had so alright everybody thanks again as always take care